So guys, I'm going to be 100% honest. Um, I can't remember where I stopped in each of my three classes. I know I got through um, insomnia or the inability to stay and fall asleep and narcolepsy, right? Um, overwhelming sleep attacks or fatigue. Um, but then that's it. So just kind of go in the video where it is that you need or look in the slide. So sleep apnea is when while a person is sleeping, um, they stop breathing for about a minute. When they do that, their blood oxygen levels drop and then that wakes them up. Okay. Um, remember your body is supposed to automatically, um, deal with your breathing while you are sleeping and while you are awake. But for whatever reason that doesn't happen, um, they do find that it is much more common in people that are overweight, um, because of the pressure that is created, um, on the body and the lungs and the organs during that time period. Um, what we need to know is that because people are waking up, um, and again, severity would depend how frequently that this happens. They are continuing to wake up and it's really messing up their sleep cycle. So a lot of times people with sleep apnea are definitely not getting the amount of deep sleep nor REM sleep um, that they need to actually process and recuperate from the night. And all of those things that we talked about are important based on sleep. A lot of those things really do come from those two stages. Okay, the treatment for that is either a CPAP or a BiPAP machine. And basically what that is, it is just... Um, like an air pressure um, device that would fit over like the mouth and or the nose, um, right, depending on the type that it is. And it creates this pressure to ensure that the airway remains open and the person keeps breathing. Um, that's a basic CPAP. A BiPAP is the same thing. It just includes um, an extra oxygen component to it. All right, with that, I am gonna skip over this little video, but feel free to access the slides and go back and watch it. Um, right, it's more specific information on night terrors. So with that, um, night terrors um, are characterized by high arousal and appearance of fear and uncontrollable screaming. It is as if the person that has experienced it is like being attacked and they are freaking out. Um, the thing is, they don't really know that it's happening. It's not a dream, right? A night terror is not a dream right? It's not a nightmare. Um, nightmares or dreams occur in REM sleep. This occurs in non-REM3, which is deep sleep. Um, it typically, right, is going to bother the people that are around the person experiencing it rather than the actual person that is having the issues with it. Um, this is typically only seen in children or in adults that have had prior history of drug use or some type of trauma to the head, um, but it is not typically seen in adults. And most specifically, it is most common in people ages three to 12 years old. Um, again, the person experiencing the night terrors doesn't typically seem to be impacted by them. It is the people around them um, that face the issue with that. And again, if you're more interested in that, you can go back and rewatch that video that I embedded um, for the purposes of time. I'm not going to show it now. All right. Last one is sleepwalking and or sleep talking. Um, this is another non-REM3 disorder, which means it's happening during that deep sleep component. Um, during this time period, right, individuals do exactly what you would anticipate based on sleepwalking or sleep talking as the name of the disorder or the issue, um, right? And this is when people, despite being in complete deep sleep, wake up, they're either talking, they're getting up, they're doing things, and they might kind of appear to be, um, awake but in a dazed or confused state, um, they do find that this tends to run in families um, and that if someone in your family is a sleepwalker or sleep talker, it's going to be much more likely that another person um, in your family is. Um, right? This can happen in adults, but it is much, much, much more common um, in children. Typically, people who are sleepwalkers are going to return to their bed on their own um, and it's not a major issue. However, depending on the severity of the sleepwalking, people could do things that are not safe. Um, and therefore, extra precautions might have to be put in place um, to ensure that people that have this condition are not getting up in the middle of the night and doing something to harm themselves. Okay. With that, I'm done with the required content. At this point, you should go ahead and start reviewing for your test. Um, that is tomorrow. Um, if you are really interested in sleepwalking, um, the government teacher and me had to throw this in here, right? 
Um, sleepwalking has been successfully used as a defense in crime, and it has also been unsuccessfully used as a defense um, in crime. Again, if you're interested in that, if you go to the slideshow, um, in the notes section, it talks about these three cases, um, and then it provides a couple of videos about the most recent case that I included in here. All right. With that, guys, have a great day. If you need me, you know I'm in the office or the book room across the hall. I'll talk to you later.